If you're watching this video, chances are you're tired of being poor and you're asking yourself, why am I poor? How can I get myself into the situation? And who can I blame for this? Well, you're an adult now, so you really can't blame your parents or the education system for all of your money problems. But what about systemic inequality, Sam? Well, if you're a minority, a woman, or you're someone living with a disability or mental health challenges, then yes, you are absolutely facing a huge disadvantage. And if you grew up in a broken home and you didn't have the love and the support that you needed to become the person that you wanted to be, and yes, you were also at a huge disadvantage. Trust me, I get it. The playing field isn't level for everyone, but you can't let these factors hold you back from improving your financial situation. So let's do a deep dive into the three real reasons why you're struggling financially and find out how we can turn things around for yourself. Reason one, you haven't created your own identity. Carl Jun once said, the world will ask you who you are. And if you don't know, the world will tell you. I love this quote because it's all about self-understanding and identity. If you don't take the time to really understand who you are on the inside, your values, your passion, your strength, your weaknesses, then the world around you will try to define you instead. So imagine it like this. Let's say you're Sam, a college student who hasn't really given much thought to the type of life you want to live or the career you want to have in the future. And you're mostly going with the flow, doing what your friends are doing and living life according to your parents' expectations. One day, a nice professor says, Sam, you're really good at math and science. You should be a doctor. You tell your parents this idea and they think it's a great idea. And before you know it, everyone around you is telling you you are meant to be a doctor. So you say, yeah, sure, that sounds like a reasonable plan. But here's the issue. Everyone is defining your identity based on one single aspect of who you are. And you, you haven't even considered whether you love math and science enough to pursue a lifelong career as a doctor. And you don't even really know whether or not you even enjoy life as a doctor, working long hours, taking late night calls. But you follow that path anyways. And that's exactly what John means when he says the world will tell you who you are. If you don't know yourself, you leave a big open space for others to fill in their ideas of who you should be. So how does this idea apply to the finance space? Well, if you don't have a clear understanding of your own identity, it is easy to fall in the trap of doing what everyone else is doing. So in my 20s, I was just like my friends, buying all the latest gadgets, splurging on brunches and bars, and then wasting my life away watching Netflix shows. I never carved out the time to give myself an identity. I didn't set bigger goals and I didn't collect high value skills. And as a result, in my 30s, I struggled financially despite earning a six-figure salary as a PA. So the point here is to spend time understanding yourself, your dreams, your passions, your skills. So that way you can confidently say, this is who I am. And I will not let the world dictate my identity, my path, and how I spend my money. And when you're creating this identity for yourself, you're not letting other people's opinions or expectations dictate your life choices and your financial choices. And that's how you build a financial identity that's true to you. And friends, if you're digging this kind of money talk, smash the like button and subscribe button. It's your way of telling YouTube that we need more honest, open conversations about money. Reason number two, you don't take action. Ever find yourself feeling like a zombie after you spend way too much time trying to decide what to wear, what to eat, or what movie to watch on Netflix? I know, so many options, what do I choose? That's decision fatigue and it's a real buzzkill. Now imagine your life as a video game. You're the main character and your success depends on the choices you make and how fast you make them. So the more time you spend getting stuck deciding whether you should battle the dragon or rescue the princess, the less time you have for actual gaming. Well, that's exactly what decision fatigue does. It slows your progress and keeps you stuck forever. And in the context of personal finance, most people allow decision fatigue to become a roadblock on their wealth building journey. They get so boggled down with all these small minor details that they forget to zoom out and focus on the big picture, which is building wealth. So they'll start asking questions like, should I invest in Vanguard or Fidelity? Which one's better? Or should I pay my student loans first or start investing in my 401k? The reality is it doesn't really matter. They're both great choices. Pick one. 
Just don't get stuck in analysis paralysis. You don't need to do extensive research to make the right decision. Getting stuck trying to figure out the best strategy will make you feel overwhelmed. And when you're overwhelmed, you end up doing nothing, nothing at all. And doing something is better than doing nothing. Because trust me, two years will go by very quickly. And you don't want to find yourself saying, oh shit, I wish I would have started investing earlier. Because that happened to me. That was my story. So my advice to you is to stop thinking about doing the damn thing. Just do the damn thing. Inaction is an action. And it's one thing to understand what needs to be done to improve your financial situation, but it's another to actually take the steps to make it happen. And I realize this really late in life, but your success in life depends on your ability to make tough decisions quickly and then act on them with speed. So the more time you spend in decision fatigue, the slower your progress will be. And the more actions you take in life, the higher your probability of success will be. Reason number three, you lack the decision-making process. Overconsumption is a massive issue in today's world. Let's face it, we're all guilty of spending way too much time staring at screens, buying stuff we don't actually need, and splurging on food, like a lot of food. Now, let's take screen time for example. How often have you found yourself mindlessly scrolling through social media and suddenly there it is? You see it, that ad for the fanciest gadget or the newest, trendiest shoes. Now, you know you don't really need it, but that ad does a real damn good job of convincing you that you do need it. So you think, sure, why not? And before you know it, the credit card is out and you're typing in your shipping address. It's impulsive, it's immediate, and let's be real, it's kind of fun just for a moment, but it's also a really quick way to drain your bank account without even realizing it. And these impulsive shopping habits is hurting your bank account right now. So how do we tackle this problem? Well, you really need a decision-making process. Before you even take out the credit card to make that purchase, you have to ask yourself, is this within my budget? Did I budget for a new pair of trendy sneakers this month? If the answer is yes, then go for it. Buy those damn shoes. But if you didn't allocate $150 a month for these new shoes, then your immediate response should be no. It doesn't matter if it's on sale. The answer is still no. Because honestly, you don't really have a lot of time in this world. Your time is precious. And you don't want to waste your time sitting around pondering, should I buy this? That's, that's decision fatigue and we want to eliminate as much decision fatigue as possible. So don't waste your time debating if you should buy something. You either you do it or you don't. And it really should be a 10 second decision. Now, if you have a budget that you've already created in the beginning of the month, you already know where your money should and will be spent on. So having this decision making process will solve 90% of your money problems. And your decision-making process should really revolve around your goals, your dreams, your passion, and your values. Most importantly, your values. So if you have created this identity for yourself, like we discussed earlier, you will find that it's very easy to use these goals as a guide to making all of your big, major life decisions. So let me share one of my personal story. In 2021, it took me three months to quit my job, leave the US, and move to Thailand. This year, it took me one day to decide to leave Thailand and move to Australia. After two days of making a decision, we acted on it and we shipped our kids onto a plane to Australia with our in-laws. And that's how fast things got now. So we make decisions a lot faster and we live the life we want to because we have a decision-making process based on our shared value. My husband and I, our shared values, and the life that we want. And guys, there you have it. Those are the three reasons I think you might be struggling financially. Let me know if you agree or disagree. And if you found this video helpful, please be sure to hit the like button and share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more money and medicine content. Until next time, thanks for watching my wealth building friends. Bye.